If we walk a short distance northeast of the Moresti Metro Station, the secret base of the family which we explored in a previous episode, we eventually find a traveling merchant with his mercenary and pack brahmin right outside the entrance to a rickety bridge. Traveling across the bridge, we find a small path between two large rocks that ends at a white picket fence. We arrive at the front garden to Agatha's house. Immediately to the right, we see what appears to be a radio transmission tower. It's quite a tall structure and appears to be in working order. What is a radio transmission tower doing by this tiny old shack? Outside, she has one tiny garden gnome, and the entrance is lit by two lights, but one doesn't work very well. At night, it flickers and makes loud buzzing sounds. The front door is unlocked, so heading on inside, we see a tiny shack. But where's the owner? I assure you, there's nothing valuable here. Oh, there she is. My, my, my. You certainly do look a little bit worn out from your travels. Oh, just look at my terrible manners. I'm Agatha. It's so nice to meet you. Now, what brings you all the way out here? Now, as we will soon see, we have the option to be extremely rude to Agatha. We can start rather mildly by responding, I prefer to keep my business to myself, and I suggest you do the same. <laughs> well, I see you have manners I'd come to expect from a wasteland dweller. All I've done is offer you safe harbor in my home. No need to get testy with me, young lady. We have two options here. The root option is to say, whatever, Grandma, like I care. That's just about all I'm going to take from the likes of you. When you walked in, I thought you were different than the normal riffraff that crawls out of the sand. I see now that I was wrong. Come back and talk to me when you decide to be more civil. And we lose karma. No, I'm sorry. I tried to be nice to you and you decided to make fun of me. Well, this old lady doesn't put up with those shenanigans. But if we'd rather talk with this nice old lady instead of being rude, we can respond by saying, What brings me out here? That's funny. I was about to ask you the same thing. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm just fine out here. My husband, rest his poor soul, saw to it that our house was well protected from the elements and the inhabitants of the wastes. Well, I'm just out here exploring. Honestly, there's nothing much out here. Looking for sand, rocks, we have plenty of that. You're welcome to look around this area, of course. Don't let me dissuade you. I'm just trying to save you some time. My husband built this place way out here for a reason. Rest his soul. Oh, your husband's dead? I'm sorry. Well, that's kind of you to say. Yes, he's gone. After he built this place, we spent many happy years together. We decided to cut off contact with the outside world and just depend on each other for comfort and company. I take it you don't get many visitors, then? Apart from supply caravans, you're the first person to set foot inside my house in a long time. It's not for lack of trying at this point, mind you. I'm just far off the beaten path. Living in this isolation protects me, but it has also made me very lonely. Or we can just be absolutely horrible to this poor old lady and say, Oh, boo-hoo. People die all the time. Well, that's the most insulting thing anyone has ever said to me. Here I offer my hospitality and you spit it right back in my face. Which dumps us back to the alienating dialogue tree. Instead of saying, whatever, Grandma, we can apologize and say, I'm sorry, the heat must be getting to me. My apologies. <sighs> My husband told me once to always forgive and forget. I suppose I should take that advice now. Rest his poor soul. Consider the apology accepted and your harsh words forgotten. You know, a frail old lady like yourself should be careful out here all alone. Old? Yes. Frail? No. I can still hold my own if I have to. My husband made me learn a thing or two about how to defend myself. Surely you haven't severed all contacts. Oh, oh goodness, no. I have a supply caravan that passes here maybe once a week. I trade with him for whatever I need, and I stock up enough till they return. Hmm, an old lady all alone, huh? Got anything valuable around? Watch the sass, Captain Sassy Pants. So you trade with them? But this place is empty. What, are you a prostitute or something? 
That's disgusting. I'm old enough to be your grandmother. I won't have that kind of talk in this house. Well, what could you possibly have to trade? Besides shelter? Well, I offer something in the way of entertainment. I play songs on my homemade violin and people trade me goods. That sounds risky. What if the caravan never arrives? Well, I always have my husband's old radio set to fall back on. I used it once in an emergency when a group of raiders was getting a bit too close for comfort to my house. Otherwise, I use it to broadcast my so-called music I play for my homemade violin. So your husband's radio can broadcast across the entire Capital Wasteland? Yes. My husband was very proud of the setup. He tinkered with that thing for years to get it working. I've tried to use it to get whatever I need, but I've never gotten a reply. You built your own homemade violin, huh? That's pretty impressive. Thank you. Well, my husband had his hobbies. I'm afraid mine was making that sorry instrument. I only wish I could replace it with something better. We can then pass an intelligence check to say, Ah, well, I guess a homemade violin is never quite in tune. Oh, you are a clever one. Yes, that's exactly the problem that I have with it. It doesn't quite play all of the notes correctly, and I have to constantly tinker with it. Let's cut to the chase. Is there something you need? You're very blunt. Not always a good trait, but sometimes it is the best way to get things done. My trading depends on my violin. Without it, I have nothing to play. No way to make music. If you can bring me a violin, a better one, I'd feel much more secure. A violin? That's hardly something that would have survived the war. Yes. Very sad, isn't it? Sad to think that no more musical instruments will ever be made the old way ever again. <sighs> well, fortunately, I know where perhaps the last real violin in the world exists. If you give me your word that you will recover it, I will tell you more. I'm interested, but what will you give me in return? As you may have already guessed, I really have nothing of value. Material value, that is. All I can offer you is the same I offer the caravans that trade with me. The frequency of my radio and the promise of beautiful music. Now we have quite a few options here. If we have a male lone wanderer, we can pass a lady killer check to say, If only you had something to keep me safe, my little honeybee. Oh my, I didn't know I still had the looks. <laughs> well, you just made my day, you sweet thing. Let me give you something extra to help you on your way. Or we can pass a charisma check to say, You seem like a nice woman. Let me go ahead and get that violin for you. Well, that's just so sweet of you. I feel bad sending you off with nothing like this. Or we can pass a 100 speech check to say, I want to help you, but that type of search could cost me greatly. You have a point. Perhaps I've been neglecting needs that you might have and being selfish. Or we could pass another speech check to get the same result in a rude way and say, Look, Granny, talk is cheap, but getting stuff isn't. You have a lot to learn about dealing with people, young lady. However, you're right. I need to think of your needs, too. I have a small amount of ammunition that my husband left behind. A box of odds and ends. I don't think I've opened it in years. If you do this for me, you're welcome to take whatever you need. No matter what option we chose, we get the key to her husband's ammo crate. All right, Agatha, I give you my word that I'll do my very best to recover a violin for you. Oh, I don't think I've been this happy in years. As promised, here's the key to the ammunition box. It's right under the radio table. Before you leave, I have some information that may help you. At least a place to begin. It all starts with my great great grandmother Hilda back in 2077 before the bombs fell. Now we've been chatting with this lady for almost 10 minutes. We can express our frustration by saying more stories. <sighs> you know, my mother always said a handful of patience is worth more than a bushel of brains. However, if you are that eager to get going, I'll skip the story. Or we could nudge her to hurry things along a little bit in a more polite way by saying, Sorry to interrupt, but where can I find the violin? I I'm sorry, I, I know I tend to ramble. Comes from being lonely. 
If you insist, I'll get right to the heart of the matter then. Or we can be pleasant company and encourage Agatha to tell her story. So, Agatha, you have records from way back then? Of a kind, yes. Hilda sent a good deal of letters to my great-grandmother Mary, who passed them on, and so forth. I suppose the correspondence could be considered a diary of sorts. 2077? I can't even imagine that long ago. It certainly is a long time. That precious instrument has been through a lot. Anyway, Hilda was quite a special woman. Classically trained and exceptionally talented at the violin. Her pride and joy was her Stradivarius violin. I can only imagine how exquisite this instrument must have been. When the war reared its head, she was invited by Vault Tech into Vault 92. They claimed the vault would be dedicated to preserving musical talent. We can answer sarcastically by saying, So, what am I supposed to do? Scour the entire wasteland asking about violins? Manners are not your strong suit, hmm? I can see this will be a purely business-related transaction. So be it. Or we can be straightforward and say, Any idea where Vault 92 is located? That's the catch. I have no idea where it is. I'd suggest making your way to Vault Tech headquarters in the D.C. ruins. That would be a good place to begin. Good luck! With that, Agatha marks the location of the Vault Tech headquarters on our map, and we begin the quest, Agatha's Song. The key she gave us opens up the ammo crate underneath the table that has the ham radio on top. We can then loot quite a stash of ammunition, including a mini nuke and a missile. The ham radio on her table must be the one she uses for her violin broadcasts. I would love to hear her play, but for now we have a job to do. And we can talk with Agatha again for a little bit more guidance. No luck yet finding the Swa Stradivarius, eh? I'm still looking, but don't give up on me yet. I understand. I haven't given up hope. I know you'll find it. Hey, tell me a bit more about your great-great-grandmother. She was quite a special woman. Hilda was her name. After she entered Vault 92, the bombs fell. And the story, as I know it, ends. What do you know about the Swa Stradivarius? Not too much, I'm afraid. It was fabricated way back in 1714 by a famous Italian craftsman named Antonio Stradivari. He had made a bunch of Stradivarius violins, actually, and each one was individually named over time to identify them. They are regarded as the most outstanding instruments ever made, and no two sound alike, they say. Incredible! Since the bombs fell laying waste to most of the world, it may be safe to say that this could be the last surviving violin of its kind. How will I know the Stradivarius when I see it? Well, from my great-great-grandmother's diaries, I have deduced that she had a special pressurized case created for it. Hopefully... The Swa Stradivarius was in the case when she, well, you know. She gives us a photograph of the Swa Stradivarius. We can examine it in our Pip-Boy, and sadly it's monochromatic. But we do see the outline of a triangular, violin-shaped case with a glass front. However, if we know a little bit about musical history, we know that a Stradivarius is usually a deep reddish color. Stradivarius used spruce wood to construct the top willow to construct the linings and the internal blocks, and maple wood for the back, neck, and ribs. Is the Stradivarius worth a ton of caps? I hope you're not thinking of doing anything dishonest. You gave me your word. The Stradivari are indeed priceless instruments. In 2010, in our own world, a Stradivarius named Molitor, which was rumored to have belonged to Napoleon, sold at auction for $3.6 million. In 2011, another Stradivarius violin named Lady Blunt was sold at auction for $15.9 million. Do you have any information on Vault 92? I'm sorry. I wish I did. All I know is that Vault Tech intended it to be a protective environment for the world's musical talent. When the bombs fell, the vault was sealed and the rest is a mystery. Perhaps when you find it, you can find some sort of a record of what occurred inside. Well, can you tell me anything about the vault Tech headquarters? From what I gather, it's located in the ruins of D.C. I got the location from one of the supply caravans. 
They told me it had extremely high security and something they call a main frame inside. I'd imagine it's quite dangerous. I'd be careful if I was you. Thanks, Agatha. I'll be on my way. Watch yourself out there. We find a music stand next to her table, but no sheet music on it. I suppose she must play everything by memory. We also don't find the homemade violin that she talked about. There are a lot of tin cans on the ground. Agatha's not quite as tidy as I'd expect, and she has a nice big double bed to the southeast. Likely the same one she used to share with her late husband. Or who knows, maybe she is a lady of the evening, and her outrage earlier was fake. In the southwest, she has a tiny bathtub, and in the toilet, we see a teddy bear playing with a race car. I would have taken this for Marie, but sadly it's set to owned, and I'd rather not steal. There's a unique lamp in this room. Agatha uses an old rusted bucket as a lampshade right next to her sink. She has three containers to the northwest, a box, a dresser, and a refrigerator, but there's nothing terribly interesting in any of them. Strangely enough, she does have a nuclear toxic waste warning symbol as a piece of wall art, but we have no indication where this came from. Her house is not irradiated, and we don't find any radiation sources near her house. But now we need to find Vault 92. We need to discover its location from the vault headquarters. To find the vault headquarters, we need to travel to Vernon Square. We've already been to Vernon Square if we explored DuPont Circle after meeting Three Dog at GNR, or if we explored the Statesman Hotel and the Our Lady of Hope Hospital, both of which are located in Vernon Square. To find the vault headquarters, we need to walk to the northernmost edge of Vernon Square. There, we find two large ruined skyscrapers and an alleyway hidden behind the remains of a big blue truck leading north between them. This path is blocked by a slew of super mutants. Thought I heard that. You like that? Over here. On the other side of the alleyway, we find a small encampment behind sandbag barricades. Here we find a shelf filled with Radex and a first aid kit next to two ammunition boxes. After looting the ammunition boxes, we'll likely get rushed by two more super mutants from the south. This area is patrolled by one more super mutant. And we find the entrance to Vernon Square North to the Northeast. We see that it is guarded by two rigged shotguns on a nearby bench, which we can deactivate for the experience. And at last we find vault headquarters towering above us to the east. This is quite an impressive ruined structure, with the words vault spelled out vertically on the face of the building ending in the vault corporate logo. I don't believe that this was the company's global headquarters, but rather a regional headquarters. This was the base of operations for vault in DC. For after all, we do find a vault headquarters in Boston as well, but that must be the regional headquarters of Boston. We already know from Fallout lore that the global headquarters of vault was in Los Angeles. Our task then is to explore this rotting ruin to discover the location of Vault 92. We will turn this entire building upside down in tomorrow's episode. So if you don't want to miss part two, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week on a wide range of topics spanning all of the games. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook for Oxhorn updates. That's where I announce any video production delays or let you know when I need to skip a day. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning with episode two.